Thank you. Hi. Uh, so my presentation is sort of a bit of a show and tell, really, about um, these two projects that I've been worked on, working on. They've just, um, both the app and the website have just been launched in the last um, couple of months. Um, I've got a tablet going around here that shows the app. Um, it, does, uh, it doesn't like map view, so don't push on map view, but I'm sure you're all smart enough to get it started again. So the idea is that you, it's been tricked into thinking that it's at high, in High Street, <laughs> on the corner of Litchfield and High Street in Christchurch. So if you just hold it up, you'll get to see the buildings. And um, I'll show you a video of that um, as, we, um, as we move on anyway. Um, so, where's my screen? Um, so just to give you a bit of the lay of the land really with regard to Historic Places Trust's uh, current digital presence, um, looks quite impressive on screen there, but these are all sort of new within the last three years. Um, so seven Facebook sites, but there's only about 2,000 friends there, so it's not so many. Those are mainly around um, properties and projects like this High Street project. Um, Waikato Wars, which was just launched um, earlier this year, a Flickr project for image collection, um, a few YouTube um, heritage stories, um, High Street Story, a Twitter project, and um, very recently um, released Heritage Explorer Education Resource, which is for um, sort of intermediate students. So this is a unique project for the Historic Places Trust in that um, we approach digital projects with extreme caution. A lot of um, conversations went on around this project, particularly the social media aspect of it. Um, we have limited resources, so we focus on what we can do and what we can do well. And we need to know that we can support them in the long term, which also has been a major consideration of this project. And we require partnerships. Partnerships have been talked about quite a lot in this um, forum, and uh, we think they're key to our, to our work, and um, we really enjoy the partnerships that we have, and the collaborations, um, and they couldn't happen without those other partners. So, um, and we consider all projects within the context of what we should be doing as part of our mission, which is to protect, preserve, and promote heritage, built heritage. Um, so these are all images of High Street. Um, we anticipate that 150 of our registered buildings within Christchurch's four avenues, 50% um, will be lost. So um, there are 500 registrations, registered built heritage buildings within the whole of Christchurch City Council, which includes Banks Peninsula, um, and 150 of those are within the four avenues. Um, oh, I've got this little pointer. I love using these. Okay, I don't know if I can do it from this angle. So the area of study is sort of this area here. Doesn't quite work when you're shaking. Um, so this is Edward Jolly's um, lovely grid design for Christchurch City. I've been wondering what he felt about having this sort of unruly Otakaro River running through the centre of his gorgeous grid. Um, and also this um, angular street here which is, was known as Watley Road and Sumner Road and it ran from Papua Nui Bush to the sea um, for obvious um, reasons, you know, uh, the bush for timber and um, the sea, the port for trade. Um, and then it became known, this end here is um, High Street and this is Ferry Road here and this became Papua Nui Road. Um, it was, for Naitahu, it was an area of importance um, for these swamps and waterways as a mahinakai. Um, and there were two pa sites, um, sort of quite close to the city, Puari and Totahi's pa. Um, really fast history of High Street. Um, the first buildings, the timber buildings, popped up in 1860. Um, and by 1875, there was a huge variety of, of businesses in High Street. Um, 1880 the tram came through, it went all the way out to the sea, and by um, the turn of the century, the 20th century, um, these wonderful uh, late 19th century Victorian, early 20th century Edwardian buildings um, replaced the timber buildings, and also ones like this which are Venetian Gothic. And those um, buildings remained until, um, or this area remained as the key commercial area in Christchurch for a hundred years. So until about 1960 when the trams were decommissioned and um, John Wilson, the historian who I interviewed for this project, said that um, you know, because Christchurch was an early um, supporter of mall culture, which we still have, um, this area became in the 70s known as the Red Light District. And there was nothing there for about 20 years really of interest. Antique shops, mostly um, brothels, massage parlours, then brothels. Um, and um, it was because of that mall culture. I mean, 
Heritage loves um, economic depression and suburban malls because it means that um, you know these wonderful full streetscapes get retained. Um, oh, look at that one! <laughs> that gives you an idea of the street, the, the complete streetscape, though. So in the 1990s. Um, this building here was the old post office. It's the tallest building on High Street. And Paul Stewart, who owned Alice in Video Land, he took a lease on this and later purchased the building. And he said that when he got there in 1990, it was like a war had happened and no one had come to clean up. Um, I think, and I love that quote, and that's one of the stories that I've recorded. It gives you a really good idea of what it was like in that time. Um, and he said it was the lowest commercial rents in Christchurch at that time. And a whole lot of really clever developers then came in and, um, and developed these laneways which were on either side of High Street. They were the warehousing district really that um, fed into the commercial buildings on High Street. So Dave Henderson um, developed Seoul Square south of Litchfield. Um, he's well known, he's a bit of a boom and bust property developer. He, um, he uh, handpicked businesses, independent businesses for in here and up the top there that's a champagne bar I took that photo at 8.30 in the morning and at the time I remember thinking what a great city a champagne bar at 8.30 and this is what it looked like sorry they're about low res um, didn't expect it to be projected so large um, this is what it looked like at night you know so this is this was developed from 1998 to about 2010 this was in development so really really recent so if you look at that cross up the top left hand corner there this is what it looks like now. So that whole area has come down. This is the, the laneways on the other side. This is where Scalar Up um, Water Bottle Factory was and Umpara Rubber. And there's a great story about the hideous smells of the water bottle factory and the rubber band factory and the back alleys here. Um, and also the dodgy dealings that used to go on. I'll just see what... So some really clever developers recognised that these heritage precincts were, were highly desirable. You know, that sort of dis feeling of discovery that you get with heritage areas. So this was kind of like our, um, what Britomart, I guess, is doing now. So this is what it looks like now. So this is High Street here, and this is the laneways. Poplar Lane was in here, and Seoul Square was here. So I guess this project is really about um, grief and loss. There's been quite a lot of talk about that. Um, so not only did we lose a huge amount of our built heritage, but people lost a huge community, not just maybe their homes in the suburbs or, um, or friends, people that they knew, but also this community that people were in every day. You know, there were all of the people that worked here, you know, there were um, art galleries and art studios and band practice rooms and, um, and all sorts of interesting shops and bars and restaurants, mainly owned by independent business owners. So it's sort of that... Um, just filled with creative, creative people and all those sort of incidental meetings that people have as a part of living in a city or being in a certain part of the city were lost and um, I think that was, that was what I wanted to look at and I wanted to um, explore a little bit in this project. So how do we remember this historically socially important part of the city, the tangible and intangible, the historic, the contemporary and the people that made High Street what it was? So my background is in um, documentary, radio and film, and I'm really interested in recorded stories. Any opportunity I get to record some stories, I'm on it. So, um, so that's what I, initially I wanted to make a sound map, a sort of walking experience of High Street. Um, I looked at a whole lot of um, digital projects and did some audio tours. Um, a lot of them, so I looked at History Pin and Soho Stories by the National Trust, which is amazing and is sort of similar to this project. Um, there's a Caledonian walk um, that the Guardian newspaper have done. Um, and a lot of the projects, and this one here is a community media project, and I love this one. It's um, members of New Orleans community just upload stories of whatever they want. So there's rap and there's um, a motelier talking really prosaically about his motel, um, there are train recordings, someone's talking about their experience of having HIV. You know, it's just incredibly broad and um, it's really rich and lovely, but a lot of these projects were either too ephemeral, they were too arty, <laughs> um, they were just didn't have um, the kind of accessibility that I wanted for this project. And um, it's probably worth noting here that the project that I created is um, 
it's, it's really cur a curated project um, in that there's no um, ability for people to upload their own material, which is a real shame and I'd like to move on to that at some stage. But um, at the moment there's... Um, so we've started off with um, just making a Facebook page to just get people interested and sort of solicit some stories and, um, and we we'll post things like, um, you know, we found this bats video, a blo block of wood which was shot from the ANZ building. So these wonderful sweeping, I guess, um, 16 millimetre film of the streetscapes, which was, funnily enough, a music video. It was the best moving image footage that we had. Um, so the film archive helped us with that. And this shop here, Knight's Butchery, um, turned out to be a skate shop. And when it um, fell down in the earthquake, apparently you could smell the meat being shaken out of the walls. <laughs> People that didn't even know it was a butchery. So um, Penny mentioned um, Seismic yesterday. So they came on, well, I asked them if I could, it could be a sub-project, and they said yes. They supported me, um, mainly with moral support. and. Um, Internet New Zealand, they got some funding. HitLab came on board they, because they just made their City View augmented reality app and they uh, liked the idea of making something that was quite contained. How's that tablet going? Is it still going? Anyone got it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and Vodafone New Zealand. And then NV Interactive, um, who made Share an Idea, for those of you who know Christchurch, Share an Idea website, and um, I think they did the Seismic website as well, and they've won awards for sort of humanitarian <coughs> web development and post Quake Christchurch. Um, so what is High Street Stories? It's 100 audio stories from about 40 interview subjects under nine themes, hundreds of images, cartoons, illustrations, film clips, music, and uh, notes on architecture and social history. And if you've got a tablet there or you want to have a look, you should um, dial it up now, because I'm going to just talk about it now. So the brief for NV was pretty broad, but um, what I wanted really was um, the most accessible, easy, simple, but beautiful website that they could make. So um, I wanted it really easily navigable. And as you can imagine, a heritage audience is primarily people over 50. So it needed to be something that they could access, and the stories needed to be, well, I wanted them to be as, as broad as possible. So contemporary culture, way back to historical Naitahu history. Um, and I wanted it to be a really immersive experience. So I'll just show you this is as you scroll down. A really immersive experience, that kind of, um, that Peter talked about yesterday, that, you know, you won't work all day. You know, that's the ultimate, um, that's the, that's the ultimate, uh, what's the word? Accolade, yeah, compliment that um, somebody gets in there and, and somebody said, emailed me and said, oh, I just couldn't stop looking and listening. And I just thought, that's amazing. That's, that's exactly what. And, and also um, barrier free, you know, disability, um, the aged, um, that you can go on, you can find something that you want and you can listen to it and experience it. And as you can see from the headings of the stories, um, that's really broad. The stories are really broad. And the little coloured box up there, as you um, scan over the page, the, a colour appears which corresponds with the theme. Um, and then you can, sorry, I'll just go back. Up in the top left-hand corner, High Street Stories, the, the themes come down. If you click on that, I was too scared to go online here. So um, that's why I've just done this. So there's the themes at the top. So you go to culture and that's what you get. And the stories are about, they're between one and the longest is 10 minutes long, but most are about two minutes. And they're not, they're not a quick fix. You know, you have to want to sit down and actually take the time, commit to listening to something. And I've, we haven't edited out all the little nuances of the way that people talk. I really like that. You know, I think those are really important, the pauses, especially with this kind of retrospective. Um, and trade, it's another one. It's my obliging four-year-old posing at the top there in his own Couture children's duffel coat. So then I'll just go back there. Trade. So on the top left hand corner, there's Cotter's Electrical. And this one, the photographs mainly came from personal collections. So Cotter's Electrical, these all came from their family collection. So if you scroll down, I've included a little quote on each, each story, a little quote from um, the interview and um, a little piece of historical information. 
And that's really, again, so it's another way of accessing it. If you don't want to listen to it, you don't want to sit through two minutes, you just want to have a quick look. Um, and then if you scroll down, I've just put these on one page, but these are full page images. And um, you scroll up and you can, so there are up to 10, ten images with each one. And um, if anyone's, have a, have a look now if you're able to. You know, it's a really, um, it's like what Peter was talking about with their museum, you know, that you want this completely immersive, you want to be able to get in and really look at the photographs. And, and that's what I wanted, this kind of crossover between a documentary and an art project, really. And then there's map view at the, at the bottom, so it'll tell you where that story is and the colour again corresponding to the theme. And further down, um, does that say, oh, I can't read it from here. Um, at the bottom, well at the bottom there's some information about the, no, I'm gonna go back. So up the top there, there's some information about the building. So it says whether or not it's registered, who the architect was, as much of that basic kind of architectural information as we could, as we could give. And um, not just photographs, but a whole lot of other medium as well. So there's a Tremaine photographs. He had this great collection that he'd um, done around the time um, of the Prostitution Reform Act. And, and again, you know, this is, this is a piece of history that was Anna Reid who helped push this um, act through. She was working in High Street at the time and um, Tim Barnett, who was the MP who helped to go through, he was um, Christchurch electorate. And it was a world first, you know, so that's, that's an important piece of New Zealand history that was based right there in High Street really, and um, video, um, so you can watch the video, you can hear a story about the filming of that video by Paul Keane, who's the bassist, bass player. And I think the biggest thrill for me is when I Google it, because I haven't had it on my um, bookmark, so I have to Google it every time. Um, and then these other things come up, and I think, oh, what's that? And um, so this one up here, is a, um, that's a skateboard shop, and they've found it somehow, you know. Um, and so that butcher shop turned into Embassy and Stencil, and he um, moved in there yeah, in the early 90s, so he's one of the longest tenants, James Scott. And, um, and he emailed me after this project came out, and he said, because he's felt incredibly kind of um, dislocated from his community, he's now in a suburban mall, and um, so that was his, you know, that was his life for um, a long time. 23 years in High Street, and he started these two businesses up. I mean, you can't, you know, I think um, it's something that hasn't really been thought about hugely with the earthquakes, you know, that there's this disparate, um, you know, feeling of dislocation and loss of sort of identity now, people pushed out to the suburbs. Um, and this here is a, um, that one's a Crane Brothers, a soup maker. So that's a um, story about the um, tailors on Litchfield Street. Um, so challenges, um, we needed a .NET provider so that we could, if need be in the future, integrate it into our own website. So the original provider we couldn't um, work with. So we went to Envy and they were amazing. Um, adding new content is something that I have to work out and um, the public can't add content, which I would really like them to be able to do at some stage. And marketing, so I feel like we've just sort of started really with the project now, you know, it's, it now needs so much more work. So I just want to get on to the Augmented Reality app. Um, I've got a um, video, it's just going to start playing, it takes a wee while to play. Um, so the app um, works on your live camera. Oh, I'm so big. <laughs> um, so it works through the camera on your, on your device and the um, app has, and GPS, so it locates you, and then um, there are 3D models of the, of the buildings. And I look a little bit gormless in this video because it was the first time that I'd seen it and I was having a wee cry because it, um, it's pretty amazing to stand in a space that has nothing left. And um, two years ago, it was a vibrant place with these fabulous streetscapes and lots of people and wonderful businesses and um, yeah, it was, it was the, I'd, I've never felt so overwhelmed by technology and its ability. And I think if anywhere an augmented reality app is um, uh, poignant or um, relevant, it's, it's in this context. I can't imagine another context that it would work better. Oh, there's. 
built up a certain level of energy and practice. Um, others came, others came around. There was a wonderful precinct actually. It was incredibly rich and diverse. Um, all within, God goodness gracious, all within a minute and a half so of walk from one another. Jonathan Smart got there in 1989 and he ended up way out in Woolston with his gallery. I mean, you can't imagine how sort of difficult that is. Um, so then there are other ways of accessing this way down here. If you've seen the tablet going around, there's list view. You can also sort by um, names um, and map view again, which will locate you in the, in the um, where you are on the street. And each of the colours again correspond with the, um, the stories. And the, different, the app gives you a tiny teaser as well, a very short. And they would ping, pick off these uh, jerrys, as they called them, and, and they'd smash to pieces and people could never work out why this was happening because they couldn't hear the guns going off. And that's the ANZ building. There was a lovely story, well not a lovely story, but a funny story that somebody posted about the massage parlour. There was a famous one up there and their spa pool had overflowed, the plumbers had to come and they were worried that they'd get AIDS. Which I just thought, <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't record that story, but it was, there were lots of um, you know, funny stories like that. So there's map view. So I like that the app just gives you these little snippets of audio as well, because I think standing in the middle of the street, um, listening, you know, you don't want to listen to two minutes of audio standing in the street. And we don't know how that street will be developed. You know, it might be that um, there are seats, and I'm hoping that there'll be tablets in various um, stores or um, shops there that people can hire, use. Um, and we've got some QR codes around that, that people can, you know, access the app that way. And at the moment we're running some workshops to um, teach people how to use it because I think it's a little bit um, scary for people at the moment. And I actually approached a couple of young tourists recently, I think they were Korean, they had their phones out and I said, um, I said, do you want to see, they were pretty much standing in the middle of High Street, completely desolate, you know, nothing to see. I said, do you want to see what, um, what it used to look like before? And I think they understood me and they, and they both went, ha, 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 no. And then they walked off and I thought, oh. Maybe there is no interest in this, you know. So um, the challenge is Android only at the moment, which is a um, shame, that's how it is. Um, user interest, we don't know. I've just produced a whole lot of postcards. I was hoping for them to arrive here, but they haven't. So um, that we will just put around this part of the city and um, wherever we can to let people know that this is available. Um, marketing, so we've got a good relationship with Canterbury Tourism and the Christchurch City Council, um, so we're hoping to get it out there as much as possible in that way, and the workshops and um, as much publicity as possible, because I think it's a bit daunting for people. Um, and also, you know, I just want to say this project was really made for us, for Christchurch people, as a sort of, I guess, a cathartic um, experience, you know, an immersive cathartic experience and that's what um, I think that our sort of community need and it's been really um, warming to see um, I've seen at least three presenters get a little bit choked up with tears and I think it shows that um, our collections and our information that we hold is really important and has such emotional veracity and I think that's um, a beautiful thing to use it in this way and um, to share it with as many people as possible and to give people these kind of experiences. Um, so that's all. Thanks. Uh, we do have some time for a couple of questions. Looking, looking, looking. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, absolutely. I mean, they're such lovely stories and diverse and um, that if anybody wants to use them, you know, I'm really keen to, to get it out there as much as possible. And um, we're going to enter into a partnership with Christchurch City Libraries with, with regard to it as, as being a collection of a project too, so that will be good as well. 
Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I think that's the tricky thing right now. So I'd love to hear from anyone who's got great <laughs> avenues for, yeah. Thanks. I just wondered if you'd shown this app to anybody in Sarah. Um, has Jerry Brownlee seen it? Um, I don't know. Like Any other people who <laughs> have taken decisions that may have had some influence on the, you know, the, the bulldozing effect later? Choose your words so, carefully. I mean, <laughs> maybe the buildings there were considered by those people as some of the old dungers, quote unquote. Yeah, I think they were. And um, at the moment, the side of uh, the Excelsior One elevation still exists. Cotters, the front of Cotters, what was Victoria Black was an antique shop. And the, the, the post office building is still there. And that's pretty much all. And there are people, there's a high street precinct group. With, they've been a bit quiet lately, but they've been fighting pretty hard for those laneways to the remaining buildings to stay there. And that area is going to become the, um, they call it the IT hub, is anyone from Christchurch? Innovation, the Innovation Precinct, that's right, that's what the, um, so, I don't know. I think I started this project too knowing that uh, this was going to happen, that there wasn't a huge amount when Sarah came in that we could do about stemming the destruction of the streetscapes. So I think um, that's why I started this project early on in the piece, because I think that that was pretty evident. And there were lots of groups fighting for the retention of those buildings at the same time too. So, but that's a good idea. I will show it to them. I'll make them all come down and meet me on the corner. And <laughs> I think that's it. Um, that's amazing. Thanks, Zoe.